Hey guys, it's Julian today. I'm going to be talking to you about how to make organic emotional burial pads. You know, I think a lot of people think that it's just samples, the pads that you hear on like Untrue and those kinds of tracks. But it's actually, you can make them your own pretty easily. I think there's just a little bit of magic to it that you have to figure out. I'm going to be breaking it down today for you. This is definitely a video that I wish existed when I first started, when I first discovered burial. I mean, it would have really uh been what i was looking for back then but yeah so to go along with this video i've actually just dropped a new sample pack which is called 10 emotional burial pads volume one the link is right at the top of the description what this is you can see it's 10 of these pads that i've made here i'll play them for you You can hear it's a bunch of super silent pad samples, and you also have the MIDI for all of these. Even some of these are actually made with the guitar, but I still went and just mapped out the MIDI for you. So you have everything that you need to make really awesome pads in the style. On top of that, I've also included some bonus burial rim shots, which are pretty nice too. You know, those kind of things can be hard to find, so I basically wanted to put all the hard to find stuff in one pack for you guys to just make it super easy to work with, and now you can go and worry about the other stuff in the track. So yeah, link is on top of the description. Again, not only do you get what I think is probably the best sample pack for these kinds of pads on the market, but it also really helps support me. If you guys enjoy these videos, I don't make a whole lot just off of YouTube alone, but with these sample packs and stuff, I'm able to keep bringing you guys new videos every single day, and keep bringing you new information too that we all wish was out there so yeah thank you so much for the support guys the pack link is right on top of the description and let's dive in so i actually have two types of pads in front of me today because i think there's kind of two different styles of ones when we talk about the pads that we've heard in a lot of burial tracks that we love there's ones like this Right, where it's like three or four chords and it's kind of like telling a story with the progression. But then there's also these, which are more like two bar progressions. Right, it's just two chords, which I'll show you. It's a lot of notes in there, but it's actually just two chords. And then you kind of get a more interesting texture based on like the sound that's playing, kind of how you have the effects set up. So I think when you're trying to make a pad like this, the first thing you got to do is decide which one you want to make. Because at the end of the day, like, you know, if you just say, I want a burial pad. Well, what really is that, right? You need to define, I want a pad that is going to use three or four or two chords to sort of tell the emotion that I want to tell here. I think you need to have a very clear goal in mind. But yeah, so for the first one, the way you're going to make this type of pad is it's actually just basic major and minor chords. If you look at this, you can see that it's, yeah, literally just triads. But then what we've done is we've kind of made things a little bit more interesting. So for one, if you look, the middle notes here, these that I'm highlighting, are actually the root notes, right? Like this first chord is an F minor, because if you look at it, you can see if we take that down and we put this up, there we go. Super basic F minor triad, right? That's like right on Google when you just Google F minor triad. But then what makes it sound a little bit more interesting is the way that I've taken... So this is the fifth, right? Which would usually be there. I've put that down below the root note. So you kind of get a deeper sound. And then we also have this high note playing. Right? Where that actually should be the middle note. But then we've put it up so high. So you have like this... It's almost like you have two things. You have like a bass, and then you have a lead up top. And then over here, if you'll notice, this actually kind of goes to like a... G 
G-sharp major 7 chord, where you can see. So we have the 5th there, and then we're actually using this minor 7th. Right? There's no 3rd in this chord. Which is, for one, if you're using a major chord in this style, you know, it helps to get rid of that major 3rd because it's going to make it less, like, happy, upbeat feeling. But also, you'll notice... Like these top notes kind of play a melody together. And so that's essentially what you're doing. You're writing chords that are going to kind of fit together into their own melody. Right? Like all those top notes create a melody and then you have... Right, like when you hear those on their own, it doesn't even sound as deep as it actually ends up being. But there you go, it's just the two different things happening though. And then the... And actually, if you look at these chords, right, if we just go up the progression, you'll notice that even that is kind of based on a basic F minor triad. Because you can see, so our root notes are F, G sharp, and C, which, if you look at the basic F minor chord again, those are all notes from that. So it's actually very simple. I think it's deceptively simple. When you hear this, you know, it can be tempting to throw in a bunch of extra notes, but really I think what's making this work is the fact that it's not that many notes, but they're all chosen just very carefully. Like, you know, having a minor 7th here, it's like that note, because of this G sharp here, that note is actually more, like, emotional in this progression than the major 3rd would be there. But by using that, it's like we don't even need the major third, so you can just get rid of it. So that's kind of how I'm thinking here, and that's how you want to write these. I think when you hear this, it's easy to think, oh, that must be like three layers of synth and like 20 mini notes. It's really not that complicated. It's just that it's very few notes chosen very wisely. But I really would limit yourself to no more than like three or four notes per, per chord. And if you can't tell the story you're trying to tell with that, then you need to try to write something better, essentially. And yeah, and then for the sound, you know, it's a pretty straightforward sound. We're actually using operator for this. And what it is, is we're using this FM algorithm. So you basically have, like, all three of these, and then D is kind of, like, just doing that little bit of FM there. And you can see that it's actually just a few saw waves here. And then we just have a little bit of FM from a sine wave, basically. That's how this is working. And you can hear that just adds a bit of an overtone, like when I turn it way up. And then we have a low pass filter on there with a little bit of an envelope. You can see that's what the envelope looks like. We also have a little tiny bit of LFO actually. On the pitches of the oscillators. We kind of give it some movement. And the spread turned up. And then we just have some chorus. A bit of auto pan moving quickly. Some reverb where basically we have one here which is just creating the texture. Like if I turn this... So here's no reverb. With it. Right, this one you can see it's 100% wet, so that's just kind of washing it out, making it feel more, like, airy. And then we have, like, a nice long reverb. And the last thing here is just a low-pass filter, actually. I find putting this at the end of the chain kind of makes it feel more sampled because essentially like when you sample something, especially with like older machines for sampling, you know, the whole thing is cutting out some of the bit rate and cutting out some of those highs. That's what creates that lo-fi sound. So by just taking off the highs, here's without it. And then with it. See, it makes it feel like it's sampled and it's like the most basic effect right there. And yeah, so that's how you do the ones where it's going to be like three or four chords kind of telling a story. With this style...
you can see that it's actually just going to be based on like two chords. So essentially we're using C minor, A sharp minor, right? Very basic, just taking that one shape, moving it up five notes basically. Like A sharp is the fourth if we're in the key of F minor. But then what I'm doing here is you can see like over here, these are all just notes from that chord. Right, there's another F, there's an A sharp, there's a C, and there's actually a C sharp there as well. Right, and then here we're using the same voices, just spread them, and then over here it's the same thing, just plus five. So, what I recommend you do is try getting a sound like this, where it's like a bit more kind of, like this is a more percussive kind of plucky patch, I'll turn off the reverb and you'll see what I mean. Right, it's something more like plucky and kind of like percussive like that. And then just taking like one chord and playing with different notes from the chord and from the scale across different octaves and just doing like that like a simple rhythm. And then you just put a lot of echo and reverb on it and that's gonna create like a really nice pad. And this has a lot more texture and movement to it. So I definitely recommend writing your pads this way like I think this can kind of give you something a little bit out of the box that's more creative and is a little bit more exciting as well and for the sound on this one so this is like this FM sound with two sine waves and then it's going into a low pass filter which has an envelope you can see that I also have it being key tracked we have a little bit of LFO on that filter just to move it around some chorus long echo and reverb a little bit of drum bus, which I like using drum bus on the pads in the style. It gives them more of that texture like you want. Then we just have a high pass filter, and that is it for that pad. So yeah, that is how you make these pads. Like I said, I want to show you a few different ones. I think it's important to not just say, I want to make a cool emotional burial pad, but I want to make this type where it's going to be this many chords telling this kind of a story. And I think if you have that in mind, and you keep it simple like this, and you stick to kind of what I'm talking about here, it actually shouldn't be that hard. This is one of those very kind of like mystified, talked about sounds. I think a lot of people think that it's just samples from old records, but you can actually make these pretty easily yourself. You just have to get a little bit creative with it, and kind of understand what's going on musically, as well as synthesis-wise. So yeah, that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get 10 Burial Pads Volume 1. The link is right at the top of the description on my Bandcamp. Again, this really helps support me. You get these 10 really solid pad samples, plus mini, plus the bonus rim shots. So you can really go and make your own track in this style now. You know, hopefully, if you've been stuck, this can really help you. Thank you so much for the support, guys. Again, I don't make a whole lot just off of YouTube, but if you grab this sample pack, it really helps keep me going so I can keep bringing you guys new videos every single day about stuff like this that isn't out there on the internet. Thank you so much for the support, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.